I think, I think our search for home, identity, belonging, all this stuff is, f number one, a fundamental human drive. Um, that's in all our traditions of faith, uh, that sense of returning to paradise, that sense of returning to wholeness, that sense of belonging. It's in, uh, it's in popular culture, it's in art, it's a theme, it's a perennial, primordial theme of human existence. Um, since the day we first had a cave, and then there was another cave over there, and we're like, that cave looks better. Let's move over there because these people are getting on my nerves. Uh, <laughs> so I think that we're all in some ways operating off of that in ways that we're not even, as I always like to say, even vacationing. Like People think they're going on vacation. They're actually searching for Eden, right? And every, every place is fine for about three days to at least they realize people are just going to work and they're screaming kids and they're <laughs> angry people and they're happy people and they're eating bananas and they're eating uh, boiled eggs and they're having oatmeal and <laughs> they're having breakfast, they're having lunch, <laughs> you know, they, that pretty much, not, not to say that there aren't cultural enrichments, riches to be had, but humans are humans, you know, we live, we exist, we, so, but, um, so that underlying sort of drive of finding home, of belonging, of connecting, I think it, um, it, it, and so we weave narratives around that, right? We create narratives around that that we buy into or buy out of um, or opt out of. To me, the quest to be the Brady Bunch wasn't a class issue. Um, it was a cultural issue. It was, uh, it was a curiosity issue. It was, it was the, it, it was that, that other hill with the greener grass and it wasn't because I didn't know, because I didn't feel at home because I grew up growing up in Miami I never felt like the other and maybe that's precisely because of that that I was able to to sort of be attracted to the other um, and it was it was just a matter of curiosity of um, uh, sort of a, a romanticizing a um, a mystifying chafing after this mythic America, like, like, sort of, how do we get there? You know, what's the, you know, do I get a train? Do I get a bus? How do we get there? Because I knew my community, and um, and again, that's a very privileged space to grow up in, and that's my experience. Um, to not ever feel like the other, because you are like everyone else around you, pretty much. <laughs> um, but that also has its detriment. I could have brought into that narrative. And I could have never left that narrative. And by that meaning, not even the narrative of Cuba as the island, but that narrative of Miami. We could have, I could have stayed in that narrative and just continued that same narrative. But there was an, always, then Cuba was another narrative that I wanted to explore. What was that place from my parents' background? What was the Cuba of today? What does that look like? How is that part of my narrative or not? And so, you know, I think it's just these stories and ways in which we try to find a place, which ultimately the sad news and the good news is there's no such thing as home at the end of the day, uh, because home keeps on changing as we change. And we're constantly, by the time we catch up with our sense of belonging, our needs change usually. So, so um, or it's not what you think it was, you know. So, um one of the things I realized is in, during, uh, as a result of being a, a presidential inaugural poet was that all these years, even though I had lived in New England and all the rest, that I still didn't quite um, believe that I was part of that Brady Bunch narrative. Um, not because of class, not because of race, not because of ethnicity necessarily, just somehow I just never experienced it, you know? And I still thought I needed to be Peter Brady or Marsha Brady to be American because that was the narrative that I thought was America, right? And what I realized as a result of my experiences of writing the poem and, and serving as, as poet was that there are all these other narratives that have always been part of the American story. They're just not highlighted. And so I realized that my story, my mother's story, this has been part of the American narrative from the very inception. I mean, the pilgrims were, were exiles, you know? And then that was a big aha moment because like, oh, wait a minute. There's other narratives that are not the official narrative. And so um, suddenly I, I felt like I didn't, I didn't need to become American. I was American all along uh, and whatnot. And, and I think the same is happening for me with Cuba now.
in some ways I hadn't been free to explore that narrative because there wasn't any, there was such lack of relationships and going to Cuba once every five or six years is not enough to really explore what that really means. Um, you know, uh, having a couple of shots of Cuban coffee a day and, and saying coño, um, you know, doesn't make you Cuban. Um, or that's another narrative. That's sort of the Miami Cuban American narrative for me, you know, that I've been a big part of. Uh, but now as, as the potential to really understand Cuba as a real country, as a real island, as a real people that have continued their narrative beyond the one that was I was told here in Miami, I realized that I'm not as Cuban as I thought, that I have a lot to catch up on. And so, and so you know, it's interesting that in, in my earlier years, I was looking at the American narrative through the lens of the Cuban as the other, right? And now that I'm more rooted in realizing that there's, that I'm more American than I thought I was, um, I'm looking at Cuba as the other through the American lens, trying to figure out what Cuban really means and realizing that I've made all these assumptions or that there are large pieces of that narrative that are still very missing. Uh, and a lot of pieces of that narrative that are yet to be written for me personally and, and for the people of Cuba and this new connection that there is now where these two narratives are suddenly going to have to confront each other. Who's the real Cuban? <laughs> you know?